I finally used a pretty meta team for Great League and of course we're gonna use none of these new Pokemon that were reworked with the big move update this season. We're gonna use instead the Shadow Polyrath, a Skeletirts and a Leaky Tank which is a Pokemon that I'm not proud at all but still I'm gonna use it because it is a pretty safe switch. So without any further ado now, cue the intro. We begin today's content with our Polyrath on Shadow Mode, up in front, up against the Gligar, which is kind of a bad lead overall because of how pushing that Pokemon can be with those aerial aces and the wing attacks. So eventually we manage to catch on our Leaky Tank and on the switch we meet up with a Shadow Gallade, which is just gonna one-shot us down with a contested close combat. I decided to take that risk on my end but look at how spammy this Pokemon can be because we cannot farm down at least not before we get hit by another close combat but this time on our ghost type. Still though it is gonna deal about 50% in total. So here comes now my disarming voice on the Gligar and my opponent will let that go unsealed it big no call here so yeah they're just gonna go ahead and of course the RLS now has to be blocked in return. So we're down two seals let's see if we can actually win this one because Venusaur is gonna emerge at the very end on its shadow mode. So now I'm gonna press my shadow ball just in case we can surprise them and guess what, we cannot but right after we got the shadow icy wind which is gonna connect finally for lethal damage after our skeleton takes those two shields out of the way. Into the next battle now with the shadow feraligator and this pokemon is another big one for this uh, season because it got reworked with the addition of uh, Shadow Claw. So here comes now another Shadow Gallade. This time it is just gonna get walled down since they want to throw all those leaf plates and we can, and we can farm a lot of energy in the process with Incinerate. Down goes the Gallade. Feraligator now returns into the battle but we have the upper hand with that Shadow Ball. I knew that I could press only one move eventually they could farm down with that Shadow Claw so that's why I went for that Shadow Ball. So now my Polaroth can go in and at the very end they have a matchup, so Icy Wind here is gonna connect for big damage and I know that after that debuff the cross chop will not hurt that much at least my Leaky Tank able to farm a little bit extra and still reach here to that Bolt Slam to finish off the final seal that they have on that Shadow Glassy Pokemon and Crocs is still gonna get to that Hydro Cannon. Hopefully though Leaky Tank is too bulky it can still survive and still deliver that final Bolt Slam for a, for a really nice amount of damage on the red and eventually we can still farm down because shadow plot damage is still gonna be resisted by our normal typing. Manting now is a very bad one for us, not only it is gonna hold down our polyrath but also the water typing will not be appreciated by our incinerates but still it's kinda playable on the long term of the battle and with a little bit of synergy. So by aggressively switching out to our leaky tank we managed to get that stunfisk in between and Galarian stunfisk is a pokemon that we are not seeing that often overall. So they're gonna reach now to another earthquake, we are getting super low here but we still managed to get get a shield out of the way. I know that my Polyrath might actually not be that useful on this battle since they have a Mantin and I want to tank whatever they throw with their Stunfisk even the Earthquake on my Shadow Pokemon. So down goes uh, the Stunfisk finally and we're having Icy Wind to debuff that Salak Pokemon. So here comes now Sableye and of course those Shadow Claws are gonna deal so much damage to our Ghost Typing. It doesn't matter, Disarming Voice now to grab that sealed out of existence and right after we got to shield whatever they throw no matter what. Another move is imminent, this time another disarming voice so it all depends now on if we can get to the shadow ball for the nuke. So we need to respect the damage from the RLAs ok but instead we're not gonna get our hands on the shadow ball, instead we're gonna throw here the disarming voice able to get that mountain super low and now it's a race on who can farm down each other down. So here comes the Polyrath and unfortunately 
unfortunately for us we're gonna fall short here even though we, we had some decent IVs on our team. Into the next battle now and let's see how this is gonna go because they're having a Whiskas overall and this Pokemon is kinda troublesome on its shadow mode because of how much damage it can do with those mud bombs and obviously it can absolutely outspeed us to those moves. And I swear to you trainers I cannot land a debuff with my skull. This is something that I came in terms uh, but uh, still it is kinda annoying overall. Anyways now I see win to finish off that shadow whiskers and now on the back they have that charge back. I'm just gonna switch out here to my leaky tank preserving a little bit of HP and kinda energy on my polyrath. I want to see how this is gonna unfold uh, towards the end game because it still depends on what they might be having at the very end. And if they have something like a red steel or a galarian stunfisk well my polyrath might actually be needed. So here comes now an empoleon. We were right on that steel typing but a different one and of course with steel wing and pollen is more meta than ever this season so i'm just gonna go ahead and uh, let my uh leaky tank go down eventually so what we want to do at this point is to let them throw the remaining energy on my polarath one more move on my uh co clown here and the skeletons while we can easily farm down with those moves and eventually they will back out because charger bug stands no chance up against an incinerator into the next battle now with another Whiskas this time. This Pokemon is not gonna be Shadow at this point, but still those Mud Bombs as you can see are still gonna come in clutch in damage. So here comes now my Skull, they are gonna block it, no debuff as well, I'm telling you I, can I cannot land any debuff at all with my Shadow Polyrath and now we're meeting up with that Wigglytuff. So that charm damage was absurd but still we managed to kinda survive here and still switch out to our uh, Skeletirts and Skeletirts now with that disarming voice will let the uh, Pokemon up against us survive with a little bit of HP to charge up a little bit extra with one final uh, final incinerate before we go down. Shadow Ball as well to finish off Whiskas and at the very end they got that Mantin. Mantin is once again a core breaker for our team but nothing we can handle with a little bit of synergy. Able to debuff it along the way with that Icy Wind and right after we go down of course leaky tank will force them to quit this battle Shadow Polyrath against the world, this time up against the Deoxys, let's see how this is gonna go because Deoxys is a severe counter to any fighter out there due to that Psycho Boost but also to our Polyrath because of that Thunderbolt uh, threat, so yeah definitely a Pokemon that we need to take care of. So here comes now my switch on my Leaky Tank trying to see what they have at the very end, so they end up uh, responding with a switch out to that Gaslord. You know what, this is why Leaky Tank is such a beast. It can survive pretty much whatever. It is gonna be thrown at it, even super effective moves, and at the same time it can provide some really nice spammy damage with the leak and of course body slam. I have a feeling that at this point they went for the undercharge. That's why we can survive, but still that was a correct play as it seems because they can farm one extra uh, dragon tail. On the long term of the battle though, it makes no difference because we can still farm down the process with those counters and of course by block here the Psycho Boost, we managed to get the debuff on that final Pokemon since now they're kinda switch locked in here with us. Right on the CMP, another Icy Wind, this time to provoke the shield as well, this is looking super promising for us and now I'm just gonna reveal my final Pokemon which is of course Skeletirts and we can easily farm down in the process without spending a sweat. So here comes now the move, I don't care what that might be after the debuffs, it is still resisted as well, it is not gonna do a lot of damage and of course we are already there on the double disarming voice range so we're just gonna throw it at it and of course we're gonna take the victory eventually. Into the final battle now trainers and we're having red steel the metal trash can up against us absolutely a wonderful lead for our team and especially under shielding that sub cannon can do almost nothing to us but towards the end game you never know what will happen so this altar is gonna come in pretty clutch against my leaky tank over here but of course after the first debuff that we threw we can stand absolutely victorious 
up against them. This is why I enjoy using Polyrath up in front. Whenever you get a good lead, you can always debuff it before switching out, which means that you can always stand on the higher ground. But my opponent here makes a pretty smart choice by switching out to the red steel, and before they completely farm us down, I will try to charge up back to a double bot slam and then reveal my Polyrath once again. With a shield advantage, we can absolutely outs outsmart our opponents, and of course, here comes the Scald now for even bigger damage. I have a feeling that at this point, my Shadow Polyrath has already fulfilled its job. Salute, my friend, and now let's see what we can do. Of course, my Skeletrix is gonna go in, start farming down some crucial energy, Altaria goes in, and they can easily reach here to a move before we farm them down completely. So Sky Attack is still gonna be blocked, it doesn't matter, we can get out of here with about a hundred energy stored up which is pretty good for us and at the very end they got a Cresselia. They called the bait on the first one but we got another South Ball ready to go and perhaps one more right after. Look at that, absolutely wonderful, through the shield and we managed to get a sweet victory because my opponent thought that we were gonna bait twice. Well, that was a good bet but I didn't do it. Anyways, that is gonna be all for today trainers. Thank you for watching and for sticking around till the end. Before you go, leave a like, subscribe to the channel if you are new to my content. And over here I have two videos for you to check out. Feel free to check them out and I will catch you up later into the next one.